Tracking is humanity's original mapping skill. Trackers must be fluent in the languages of time and weather and in animal and human behavior. To be able to read and write is not an evolutionary competence of human beings. We only learned it very, very recently. So it seems that tracking is the underlying intellectual framework that allowed us later to, to be able to read and write, to recognize words. So a tracker recognizes a print on the ground the same way that you and I recognize a word on a page. Karawa here, this is a kudu that he has run down using the persistence hunt, which we now believe may well go back almost two million years. Um, it, it may well have been the very origins of hunting itself, long before the bow and arrow was invented or dogs were domesticated. Louis Liebenberg took workshop delegates into the field to demonstrate the use of CyberTracker. And then I can just input the jackal track. Uh -huh. So select the jackal icon. When the triangle shows, it's captured the GPS position okay, and it's saved the data. You have to tell it whether it's a male or female. But if you don't know, there's also an option of saying, I don't know whether it's male or female. Once you, you tap that, that uh, symbology for, for, for cloven animals, it gives out the next page, it gives all the whole series of all those cloven animals. And then you just scroll, scroll through them. Oh, it's actually the buffalo. Notre communauté, c'est les baguettes, donc les pygmées. Ça, c'est ma communauté. Oui, avec l'appui des ONG, je crois que je suis aujourd'hui l'un des, des leaders qui défendent les intérêts de notre communauté, donc ici là. Donc, maintenant, donc, on introduit ça à l'ordinateur. Ça prend tous les points que tu as eu à travailler dans la journée, ça introduit ça à l'ordinateur maintenant, et comme ça, vous sortez une carte. Dans notre pays, nous sommes déjà, nous avons fait des cartes des territoires des pygmées, que aujourd'hui, parce qu'il y avait tellement de problèmes avec le voisin, Au problème du terrain, aujourd'hui, on a fait sortir des cartes qui sont déjà bien limitées. CyberTracker is already in use by sand trackers in a Botswana biodiversity project. This little bird would be early this morning. Basically, we are trying to create a wildlife corridor between the Central Kalari Game Reserve and the Kalari Transfrontier Park. The, the sand uh, trackers have the skills to identify the tracks. So what we are doing, we are sort of uh, using the technology and then the traditional knowledge to, to, to monitor those resources. Yeah. So we, we, are, we have trained about th with 13 trackers now to use the cyber track. The tracking skills are sort of fading away between generations. We believe this technology is now going to encourage even younger generations to know what the tracking skills is, because now it's more like into the computerized system. So I think it's quite a, 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 a good future for, for tracking skills in the Kalari. I think the most powerful aspect of this tool is it enables um, marginalized communities to, to capture their, their knowledge in a way that can be uh, used scientifically to, to monitor wildlife, especially with, um, with climate change, um, with, with changes in the ecosystem. They can, they can provide a wealth of information of ecosystems which we, which we would otherwise never be able to get. So we, we go into the field with the cyber tracker and mark all the plants that are there. So if somebody wants to take out additional plants, then we, th they need to come and ask permission from the project to say that he's going to take a certain amount of plants out and where exactly is he going to take it out. So that's how we manage our plants. The ecological destruction in Mao Forest is pathetic. I mean, uh, uh, at around 400,000 acres, Mao Forest, the home of the Ogiek, is one of the biggest water catchment areas in, uh, eastern, in, east, in, east, in the whole of Eastern Africa. But maybe about half that forest has, has gone to agriculture. It's now clear, clear territory. Sometimes you may, you may even assume that there was never a tree there. The Ogiek of Eastern Mao specifically have done a participatory 3D mapping, and they did it in August 2006. Uh, that was the first time in about 30 years that the 21 clans in the area came together to work on an issue. That was a big advantage, bringing people together, solving conflicts, and then there was also a lot of intergenerational transfer of knowledge. Uh, the OGEC uh, in early August 
took the model to Nakuru town where they called a press conference to claim the ancestral rights over the eastern part of the Mao and to show the world the deep knowledge they have about that part of the world. The idea of doing mapping in Niger comes since two years only. Unfortunately, within the two years, the situation in the country is, is uh, the, the conflict come back. We are just continuing to, to discuss with elders, with uh, indigenous population, with Tuareg people there. So we, we, we did the first step. We finished uh, discussing. We finished uh, dr uh, drawing the, the first step of mapping, but we cannot now implement the, the mapping because the conflict is, is, is open. War is open. Total war. Delegates left the workshop determined to use the skills they learned here to strengthen their land rights and cultural advocacy campaigns across Africa. What we're hoping that people are going to take away with them is some insight into what makes for good and effective advocacy. So good and effective advocacy means putting the local needs at the center of your strategy, but understanding that there are UN international instruments that protect the rights of indigenous peoples. And what you want to do is know your rights, know your community, and then approach your government in a healthy, intelligent, strategic way through alliance building to recognize those rights, to bring about those changes, to bring about a recognition and a value of what hunter-gatherers and pastoralists offer inside Africa. Ce qui m'a impressionné, on a vraiment un lien. Malgré qu'on n'est pas des mêmes peuples, ni des mêmes territoires, mais on a les mêmes problèmes sur les terres, sur le pâturage, sur la cartographie. On dirait qu'on a fait la cartographie de chez moi. Et ça, ça m'a vraiment impressionné et je suis tellement contente d'être avec tout le monde ici. Hey, 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 hey.